Welcome to the Blind Tinkerer's Workshop. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Blind Tinkerer's Workshop once again. Well, this VM Model 309 record player is now going to be restored as far as the amplifier is concerned. I just got the parts in from Bob this morning. He got me some terminal strips. Of course, that was before Buzz sent me um, the ones in the mail I didn't know about, but that's all right. We'll use them. And capacitors and everything I need to do this amplifier here. And this video is not going to be step-by-step. Uh, step. It's going to be, I'll show you as I go along and what I've done and so forth. Try to keep these videos down as much as possible in length. It is quite cold out there, and I have to run Mr. Heater. Otherwise, I can't do anything in here, because this little heater I just put up on the shelf here, that's the 250 water that just keeps the uh, place up a little bit. Uh, doesn't really make it warm in here, but it helps. Because I can't run, like I say, I can't run a 1500 watt heater in here. We'd be in the poor house with the electric bill. Yes, uh, Doug, I'm going to be using the... Um, camera boom on this project so I'm going to get going very soon here first thing I want to do is to clip out the parts here that I'm going to show you and for that we'll put you on the camera boom all right um, this is the bottom of the electrolytic can right here. And uh, what I got to do, and I'm going to do this off camera, is I'm going to snip the terminals right off the electrolytic and leave the components on there. And then I'll transfer them one at a time onto a terminal strip. And I'll take out the, uh, you know, I'll, re I'll remove the rest of the uh, terminals that's, that I clipped off of the electrolytic and I'll clean it up and get the, get the wires out as best I can. I'll try to save the components. Um, Bob has to bring me over a fuse holder, the kind that mounts to the chassis with the screw in the middle. Um, I don't think I have any. Uh, so he's going to bring that over, but I'm not going to get this um, done today anyways, I don't think. It may be done on this video, but it won't be done today as far as real time is concerned. So anyways, let me get started on that right now. was I got a diagram marked up here. I'm a terrible artist. Terrible, terrible, but... Um, so we got three points at which the common negative is uh, on the can itself. So we got to remove those first, and those are the black wires that you may be able to see here. I'm sorry I can't get closer with this camera. I just don't have a camera that'll do it unless I use the Samsung S F40. So we're doing the best we can with what equipment we have here. So let me go work on that, and I'll get right back on this video. It's so cold on the top of the bench here that I have to put my little electric heater on the top of the bench. And Mr. Heat is sitting on the floor. All the heat rises to the ceiling. That's why I don't want to use a exhaust fan to pull out the heat. We need the heat. Um, but I may, when I get the extra money, <laughs> it's so cold on the top of the bench here that I have to put my little electric heater on the top of the bench. And Mr. Heat is sitting on the floor. All the heat rises to the ceiling. That's why I don't want to use a exhaust fan to pull out the heat. We need the heat. Um, but I may, when I get the extra money, <laughs> I'll uh, get a uh, little fan, muffin fan, to stick up in the vent. I just haven't been able to find one. Uh, right now I got other things I got to buy. So let me get started on this now. We're going to start clipping. Uh, I got the terminal strips right here that Bob brought over. And I got the ones that Buzz 1151 gave me also. 
And uh, Bob also picked up some from Radio Shack, but they're really thin, he's telling me. They're not made really that good. Uh, and uh, the capacitors and the resistors. So let's get started on this. And I gotta start clipping wires here. All right, I got the uh, electrolytic out and I left the terminals on. I just cut them and, and twisted them off. And I don't think I hurt the diode. I was flexing the lead around quite a bit. So now I have some way of working and making sure that they go on the right places. And then I'll clean off each one of these and get these, get the terminal strip in there and put these onto the terminal strip uh, once I locate where I want to put the electrolytics. Um, I'm going to get this phenolic washer out of here because it's broken anyways um, in places. So I was going to be a little difficult drilling this out because the right way to drill it would be in here, but I can't get the drill in there. So what we're going to do is break it off and just cut it with a wire, wire nipper, cut the rivets out. And maybe I can put the electrolytics, let's see, am I in camera here? I have to, it's an awful strain to look at this little light viewfinder here. Okay, so electrolytics will, may go, be sticking on this side, extend the leads and then bring them onto the terminal strip if I can't get them underneath here. I don't think I'm going to be able to get all three of them underneath here. It's, it's still too cramped. And I'll never be able to work in there. It's too tiny. Well, I got a little dilemma here. Um, the room, there's not enough room to mount uh, the terminal strips. One could go here, whether it be that way or this way, I can drill a hole and mount one here. And then there'd be room for one electrolytic. He gave me 350 volt electrolytics, which are a little large. And I really needed 250, physically a little large. One would go on the terminal strip this way. There wouldn't be enough room because of the depth of the chassis with these in the way here. So I can only put one here. And I'm going to have to mount a, an, another terminal strip over here, and this is the 12AX7, this is the input here. So, like it or not, I'm going to have to have the electrolytic at the input. So I really don't like to have the filter or the power supply near the input. This is the 12AX7 socket here. Um, I have to transfer these leads over to a terminal strip and connect the capacitors to these connections here. This is the uh, the B minus right here, and this is the B minus here. So these two go together, but this can go on this terminal strip here. It's very hard to do this and hold this and everything else. I'm trying to show you what I got to do here. I'm going to just do it and I'll show you afterwards. And, and in other words, there's going to be two terminal strips, which I knew I would have to do. I was hoping I could put the electrolytics out under here in this hole on the outside and come feeding in. Um, but I, either way, I got to put a terminal strip in there. So I'm going to, like it or not, I'm going to have to put two of the filters over here. The, the 100 microfarad, which is replacing the 80, and 147 microfarad, which is replacing the uh, 40, uh, the 50 microfarad, and then the other 47 over here, and that's the only way I can do it. All right, it's very, very cramped in here, so I have no choice. I got a, a drawing made. There's two 47, 470,000 ohm resistors that go to uh, the one point on the electrolytic on one of the uh, 47 microfarads. And this is a red wire that goes on that terminal also. And it goes to uh, pin six of both the 50 EH5s. So I got to make a note of that because I got to disconnect these terminals down here. These are left over from the electrolytic studs that I cut off. 
I was hoping I could leave them on the last minute and do one at a time, but it's just too crowded in here. I'm going to have to clip them all off and make damn sure I don't screw up on my diagram. And I still have no room for these electrolytics. Uh, there's no physical way I can put three of them electrolytics in here. They're just too big. Uh, I'm going to have to try to mount all three of them, tape them together on the outside, add the spaghetti tubing that uh, Bob gave me here, on the, and add extensions to the leads, but it's going to be uh, loose. I'm not going to be able to keep it, you know, it's going to wobble around. It's going to be a Mickey Mouse job, and I hate Mickey Mouse jobs. So, I got to really keep my head about me on this one because it's so cramped in here. It took me an hour just to put these in. And it's so bad I have to hold the eye lope and I have to carry the solder over on the iron like I used to do when I was a little kid before I learned how to solder properly because you need four hands. One to hold the eye lope. I just can't do it. I don't have my... Um, my camera uh, yet because I don't have a damn flat screen monitor so I can't use it my inspection camera I have a microscope camera coming for Christmas but that's got to work through the laptop I hope that works okay but anyways I got the 247,000 ohm resistors in and I had to add a piece of wire to the uh, for the B plus here to come through. So one electrolytic's gonna go here. Over here is the uh, the common neutral, uh, the common negative, which right now is not soldered, it's just bent over. And boy, I'll tell you, it took me a very long time just to do this little bit here. So I might be able to mount one electrolytic here. This is the front end of it. I hate doing that, but I have no choice. And then the other one would be mounted Probably in this area here, but I got two other electrolytics that I got to go in there. And uh, before, and I got, I'm probably going to cover up this fusible resistor, so I really should replace that. I've got a 5 watt 22 ohm resistor to replace that with. So I think maybe I better put that in first because that's going to be covered up with the capacitors. I'm not going to be able to get at it. All right, I got two terminal strips in here, and um, I've got the common negative solder. These are all loose right now because I got to, um, sure I'm in camera here. Um, I got to put those on these terminal strips here. So the one on the left here is the common negative, and I got a black dot there to show that. Uh, this is the, uh, point where one of the electrolytics will go and also the two 470,000 ohm resistor and the red wire and this is a ground which is not used and this is open right now so we, it's available and I got this terminal strip here which I think is the one that uh, um, uh, Sam brought over uh, Bob, Bob, I'm sorry, I get names mixed up. It's always been my problem. Uh, and this is the one that Buzz gave me. So I had to improvise and make a choice of which ones. And uh, so I'm going to knock off for today. That's all I'm going to do. There'll be more in this video, of course, but I got the 5-watt, uh, 22-ohm resistor. We can't get fusibles local, so that's all right. This will do. And we're going to put a fuse in there when Sam, uh, when Bob gets uh, picks up the fuse holder for me. And I'm not done there. This is the other common negative here, which was on the other side of the can. It will be brought over to here, but it's going to be tied onto here because the negatives of the electrolytics must go here. So there'll be one or two electrolytics here and one over here. I'm going to shut the heater down. I went through one tank of uh, propane in just the two hours I've been working here. It's on low. So this thing don't run more than two hours on uh, on a tank of propane. Now, I'm going to mention once again, uh, as a couple of people have in the past have said, why don't you use an external tank? 
uh, from what I've been reading on this, uh, the propane is dirty when you use an external tank. And um, you get the cleaner propane using these bottles here. So yes, it costs more, but you're safer. You don't have to uh, clog up your heater. Plus you have to buy a, a hose made for that and a filter. And it ties me down. I can't move this around and I'm going to be tripping over a damn hose. So again, I'm going to use this the way it is. But, you know, I'm on my second tank right now. So it's time to shut her down. Plug in the electric heater and uh, keep the place from getting too cold here. I'm going to knock off for today. I've been working on this for, oh, I'd say more like three hours, but I was, uh, you know, trying to get the place warmed up first. It's comfortable in here now, but um, I'm surprised I can do any work at all in this place because of the uh, cold, cold weather. And when I had my shop in the attic when it was 20 degrees out, I would never, never work up there in the... Uh, in the attic you know so uh but here well you know we'll do what we can so it's getting there but oh it's so cramped i'm going to try to get the electrolytics in here it's not a very neat job but of course don't forget there's some resistors there's uh several resistors and other connections that are just hanging there they're not ready to go in yet because i just got to mounting this second strip right here and uh i'm going to try to get the electrolytic so i can get one over the top of this five watt resistor which is not the way i want to do it but the chassis sits this way so the capacitor will be on the bottom and the resistor will be on top but this resistor is in series with the uh, B+, plus, in series with the uh, diode on the AC side. So um, it's the current that's going through this is not for the filaments of the tubes. The filaments of the tubes go directly to the line, but are not fused. I'm going to fuse the entire set with a one amp slow blow. Actually, we could. And then I can mount that. If I don't have room to mount it inside, I'll have to mount it on the outside. Because there's very, very little space in here. So that concludes this video of this VM Model 309 record player.